So we're going to hear a passage this morning from the Gospel of Mark. We're in the Gospel of Mark all the way until Advent. And um, what we hear in this passage is kind of a familiar technique. We heard it a couple of weeks ago where the Gospel writer, Mark, he has this tendency to take a couple of stories and splice them together. He starts a story and then reverts to another one and then comes back. And, um, and it's also a story, again, where we see Jesus crossing the sea. That's kind of a familiar thing in Mark's gospel. And it invites us to think again about like our own transitions and where we're going from one side to the other and kind of also what's the boat for us, like who are the people who steady us, who help us go in new directions. And this is a passage that also you find um, where kind of the patriarchy is alive and well, which is true throughout the scripture, but where you kind of see a little girl who is protected by a father and then a woman who is on her own. And, you know, we're invited to read this story in fresh ways, too, and think about, again, what are the new stories we tell? When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and Jesus was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came and when he saw Jesus, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly. He kind of cried out from his depths, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well. And that the Greek word there is like so so. It means kind of like to be whole, to be rescued, to be preserved, to be saved. So Jesus went with him. Then here's a new story. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who'd been suffering for hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. So it's possible that she had some means at some point, and then she's been kind of exploited and trying to find a cure. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Again, that Greek word, whole, restored. Immediately, her hemorrhaging stopped, and she fell in her, felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, which is another big thing for Mark, Mark's in a hurry, immediately, aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on me. How can you say who touched me? Jesus looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well, restored and rescued and saved. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, so now we're going back to the other story, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead, why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. Jesus allowed no one to follow him except, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. So now this is like, remember how Jesus went up on the mountain with Peter and James and John? So this is like a tip-off that this is a big story. When Jesus had entered, he said to them, what, who... Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. And at this, they were overcome with amazement. Jesus strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. 